All right, welcome back, guys, and welcome to the patch 7.15 patch rundown. Kind of redundant, whatever, we'll go with it. Uh, so, last patch, I didn't know what they wanted to do because I thought the game was in like a relatively good state at the start of last patch, and then they just like kind of threw stuff at the wall. Like, I think they did four minor reworks, in in introduced Duskblade, which is super impressive, and rebuffed Cinder Hulk. And reduce the cost of bombing cinder, which making like the meta change drastically from something that was competitively really good and even I feel like solo queue wise pretty good um, to like just the absolutely no idea like middle of nowhere it felt like a a preseason or mid season patch as opposed to something that they would toss in the middle of the season. Honestly, it had that m that much sweeping ramifications. So in this patch. I like to see him tone back some of the stuff that that is like super strong for other for certain champions. Um, maybe looking at tanks in general. I think Cinder Hulk uh, is super super powerful. Uh, looking at champions like Cho'Gath and maybe Maokai because they're really really strong. And looking at Duskblade and generally just how strong it is as an item. Anyways, let's keep going. For the competitive side of the game, Rachel Files is approaching as a re uh, Oh, that's true. As a result, we're trying to increase some variance in high levels of play, but also create some stability. Uh, increase variance creates stability. I don't think that's the wording they wanted to do, but I, I understand what they mean. To start, we're giving some dominant champions love tap downwards. Show love to underplay champions in the custom scene competitive play. While it may look like a larger patch than usual, many of the changes are pretty small. And we're giving Urgot rework. Cool. So Urgot rework, really cool. I talked about it last time. Akali, uh, I think she's actually pretty good as a, like a top lane tank counter right now. Um, so what did they do? So they buffed her ratio by 0.1, probably on both on both sides of the ratio, and decreased the shot by two seconds. I think actually Akali is in a decent spot right now. I don't think necessarily know she, if she needs that many buffs. She's strong as a champion, uh, uh, an anti melee champion, a top lane. And especially good against tanks that can't do enough damage to be able to shut down her, her healing. So, uh, don't necessarily know if she needed that many buffs, but it's not that much. So, I have no problem with this. Azir. So, what are they doing? Azir is a more attractive option. She has a late game hyper carry against many of the current mid lane picks. Uh, so, they're making it so that he does 25 more base damage. Uh, I think the likelihood of this champion scene play is still relatively low. I still think that he tends to take too long to get good. Um, usually most champions get good around one item. I think Azir needs about two and a half or two or or even at best a one and a half. Uh, he was used primarily as an Ori counter, so I can see them trying to buff Azir to see to give Oriana more counterplay. Because at the moment she's probably the single least counterable mid lane champion at the moment. Uh, additionally, Cho'Gath. So this champ is actually a little bit overtuned. I think they should tone them down a little bit and so what are they going to do? They made it so that this base damage, if it's E, is a little bit lower and the target's max health is lower. I think that's a pretty good trade-off. Uh, Chugak was doing too much. I still think that due to itemization reasons, he's still too good. So I th he tends to scale really well with both stone play and lock it. Uh, but uh, this is a good step to be able to tone down his relative strength. Uh, Chugak will still be really strong after this. Uh, Dr. Mundo. E now increases... Oh, magic resist? Oh, that's interesting. Okay, okay, okay. They're making him a magic resist anti-tank, which he is already because at top lane, you can't actually build Mundo into anything that's not a magic damage source because they can just build the health executioner's calling and your like entire kit just becomes negated. And so he was only primarily used as like a rumble or Maokai counter pick plus an AP champion mid or even like triple AP top side. So I do like that they're actually pushing him toward this like MR, crazy MR tank. I actually think that's pretty cool. So now Mundo's niche is you pick him into double AP, triple AP comps, and he should be able to frontline pretty well against them. He's still not super good due to the I due to the lack of hard CC as well as just in general uh mortal like mortal wounds becoming a more popular debuff all around. But I like that he's kind of, kind of maybe has his niche now. Echo, E cooldown reduced at early levels. Okay, so they buffed him by a couple seconds early to be, so that he can lane better. Not a big deal. Good buff. He's not seen much play right now. 
And that's because he tends to be pretty ineffective against most of the meta mid laners. I think both Cassio, Ori, Corky, all do have really, really good matchups into him. And so I think he scales relatively well. Giving him early game buffs, probably a good way to step in the right direction. Elise, base damage, attack damage decreased. Okay, I think that that's pretty reasonable. Elise is probably the best ganking AP damage jungler. Um, and so... I, I don't mind them toning down the least because I think relatively she ganks super well as well as tends to bring in like a lot of CC uh, and skills decently well throughout the game due to her CC. But um, I do want to say that if you do end up nerfing at least like the threat or like the the strength of Cinder Hulk junglers is so high right now that like sh maybe you just start seeing only tanks in the jungle, which is something that you're seeing a lot more of in the first place. So I would say. I would be careful about this change if there's no nerfs to Cinder Hulk or any of the tank junglers further down the list. As well, Q cooldown reduced their early ranks from 6.5 to 5.5. Okay, cool. They're making it so that he can have a slightly better early game. A champion that tends to struggle in the early game, especially because he tends to tier itemize. Makes sense. Good buff. Uh, gameplay, passive damage up. So they're increasing his passive damage early by 15. That's actually pretty strong, and uh, I still think he tends to fall into the problem where he's not as effective till level 13 with multiple barrels, as well as that he's not effective till he gets a lot of items, so tends to lose lane against most of the crowd. But I don't, I think this is like a good thing to buff him. Uh, he he should in my in my like thoughts be a counter pick to tank top laners. Uh, maybe a damage oriented counter pick to tank tops, but at the moment I don't think he really suits that because he tends to get dove really easily and just not be that great into anything that's not just specifically maybe Shen. Um, but maybe with a couple more buffs like this, we'll, we'll see more play. At the moment, I don't think this will do anything, but it's nice. Gragas, champ's really good right now. Base attack speed decreased, R cooldown increased at earlier ranks. Okay, so it clears too quickly, it brings too much to the table, so they nerfed his. Uh, attack speed as well as cooldown makes it so his clear is a little bit worse and his ulti early, early ulties are more important similar to the old Lee Sin nerf I think that's reasonable Gragas is really really strong right now Aurelia old cooldown reduced her early ranks Ooh, they're trying to bring her back uh, okay so just a nice buff to her I still think she's only really useful as a NAR counter pick at the moment top lane but may see more play as she receives more buffs not going to mean too much but could be important with if she gets another small buff. Jinx, W cooldown reduced. So, Runan's Hurricane both now probably deal Fishbone's bonus damage. Okay. And then her Zap... Oh, her Zap cooldown goes to 4? She's a much... She's like a more much better poker now? That's so strange. Uh, Not necessarily what I expected, but not awful. Her Zap does a decent amount of damage. Um, I... At the moment, Jinx is more toward the hyperscaling uh, like area, and the game is more so relatively early game focused that Jinx's rel relative like strength got negated a lot. So anything that helps buff her to making her like be good at one item or two items is what Jinx needs to see more play. Uh, is this it? I have no idea. I don't play Jinx, but it's definitely an interesting way to do it. Kane. Ultimate bonus AD racial increase. Thus, by now appropriately interacts with Kane's abilities. Uh, I have never, not personally played Kane at all, so I can't personally say much about the matter. I played against him and with him, though. So what's he gonna do? His bonus ratio is increased by 0.4, which buffs his shadow form. And. A bunch of bug fixes. So this is essentially. Just the idea. Oh, and you can now get two Duskblade procs off his ulti, which I guess is pretty cool. Like, really nice if you're going for that. So they're, they're just trying to buff his blue blue form, which I guess is cool. Uh, I haven't really seen his blue form at all, so I guess it's really good to buff. I don't think Kane's a bad champion, though. I don't necessarily think he needs many more buffs outside of this. Definitely not global buffs to a champion, because I think that he has, a like, a good niche. A strong, especially with his uh, Rast... Or his dark form W is really, really powerful. Lissandra, she's a really weak champion. Um, probably a champion that tends to get punished the most for mana regen issues. 
so what they do, they buffed her mana per level and her base AD so she can last it better. Really good buffs to help her problems, like her, like, and she had an earlier buff to help her mana regen problems as well, like a while back. Um, her, her problem, like, is to her, her range is not long enough to be able to contest strong mid lane picks. However, I think that at least buffing her mana allows her to be able to somewhat even out the lane doing so. So, good buffs. Really, really good buffs out increasing her relative damage. Lux. Q cooldown. Oh, by the way, if you ever want to, uh, like, make Lissandra good, uh, they could just rebuff her base mana regen and then give her an actual passive. Um, something that could maybe help her in time in her weak areas of like either bad range, but I do think I don't like her. I think her current iteration of her passive is terrible. And it's a good example of a passive that where Riot doesn't want to add any extra power onto it, so they just kind of made her man her base stats really low and they compensated it with like a mini game to to where she gets mana a free spell due to so and so many casts. Or I'm hitting so and so many champions. I, I, I really dislike stuff like Lissandra passive. Uh, moving on, Lux, Q cooldown reduced at early levels. W of hits ally when going out. The incoming shield is doubled. Oh, that's really interesting. So Q cooldown is really good. Lux is one of those champions that tends to scale a lot based on CDR. She has three abilities that scale based on level. And so uh, she tends to be effective around like the one and a half item spike, uh, but getting there because she has such high CDR CDRs early, she tends to not have good matchups because she has big windows where people can tend to abuse her, as well as the fact that she doesn't wave clear super well. Uh, but hitting an ally as it's going out doubles the shield granted when coming. I think this is really cool. Uh, this is a nice interaction where you. It actually might be really, really powerful. I, I think her shield is is low-key one of the best abilities in her kit. And if it doubles when it, once it comes back, that's... It's going to be a lot better than I, than I thought. Or, or than I think right now. Maybe to even to the point where you might want to consider seeing how much uh, it gives as a support. And maybe even try putting your bot with W Max. Like, to that degree. Um... It, sure, it's super slow to come back, but I mean, you're gonna take extended trades sometimes to where like that shield is gonna help out a lot. It does. This does tend to buff flex support more than anything else, uh, especially mid lane, because you're not gonna be able to hit the two things at once. So this is this is like a, more of a pointed bot lane buff, which is kind of and, and like mid game, late game fighting buff. Uh, which is good. I mean, I, I like the small buffs here. I always think balance-wise, they should be buffing a lower-tier champions to the point where they can see play and making sure none of the super top-tier champions are oppressive, are so oppressive that you can only play a couple picks into them. And I think that that's like the, the ideal place for balance. And small buffs to lower-tier champions like Lux, great way to do it. Nami, uh, they buffed her Q... Okay. I don't necessarily... I'm always scared about buffing Nami because she tends to be a champion that, that does really, really well. Um, especially in metas where she can be... Where laning is very important. And like even before the Doran Shield meta, Nami was super top tier. So buffing her like this kind of scares me a little bit. But um, I haven't seen her recently. So she's... So due to the Doran Shield adding a lot of more different supports, maybe she needs this extra uh, buff to be able to help her out early game. I think it's okay. Nasus, E now shreds percentage armor. Oh, that's... That sucks. E shredding percentage armor actually sucks for me. Uh, it, it's so much better to reduce flat especially early because you do so much damage uh especially because i e maxed on ap nasus so it makes it worse for me i guess he skills better with it now okay what's the other thing key cooldown is half during r oh really that's a great buff that's a super good buff it, it, it means that like when he turns big 
you got you have to get out of melee range because he will beat you down with siphoning strike actually just like crush you um he has a really really good damage window now you might actually see a lot of play due to this like i think this is a really big uh new spike that he has in terms of damage just makes him this is this is a big buff to him really really big buff Scythe Strike does work on towers too, right? So he becomes even like a super powerful uh, tower shredder as well. Really, 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 really nice buffs. It means that like he doesn't need to wait to farm a lot to be able to hit strong team fight presence because with Fury of the Sands, you're gonna be you're gonna be beating people down really, really easily. Alright, let's keep going. Nautilus. This is kind of the forgotten tank. Um, he got nerfed a lot because he is too powerful, and now that all the other junglers are really, or all the other tanks are really strong, I think they're, they're going to compensate him with buffs because he got nerfed a lot before. Uh, early Q damage, old cooldown, reduced at 1. So they didn't actually buff the thing that used to, that made him oom. They made it so that his Q does slightly more damage, which, to be fair, kind of irrelevant. Um, you, if you're a Nautilus player, like this is really helpful, right? The twenty seconds off his ulti early, but what makes him pow what what make him better is his ability to like get mana reduction on his E, um, because his E was what got nerfed to where he couldn't land. This this is nice. Not gonna bring it back. Uh, Shivana Enos gets a total AD. Scorch. Oh, okay. So there, I, I actually don't know what to think about Shivana. This is just a clear buff to her kit, um, which is cool. Like nice. I don't see any of her, so I think she's not very strong. Um, and I'm glad she's getting buffs. I don't know how good the, these buffs are. I don't know how much AD even build on her because I've seen Titanic plus. Um, uh, attack speed builds more frequently than I've seen AD builds, so I am not the person to really ask about this. Uh, I don't think she'll see play still because she has uh, just inherent problems with the fact that like she's just her her form of initiation is not great, and she's not strong enough to be able to really like punish other junglers. So maybe I don't think this will do enough to see, make her see more play. Singed, Q, Q particles more clear, especially for colorblind players, R now gains stats faster. Really nice clarity, always good. Uh, Insanity Potion now receives stats instantly as opposed to sometimes having a point. Okay, also really good. Uh, just some quality of life buffs. Uh, not so much anything that matters too much, but nice. Silver Q damage increased by early. Remember that Boomerang Blade hits twice, and so you get, he's getting she's getting a thirty damage buff, with both which both ways means that she gains sixty damage, give her like probably like fifty five damage. That's less damage on the way back, right? Um, the buff is actually really nice. Really, the thing about Zibra is I don't think she needs these buffs. I think she's a really really strong pick already in the current meta. Uh, especially with the onslaught of so much Tristana, as long as Callista's out of Callista and Caitlyn are banned, which is very likely in, in competitive games or even in solo queue, uh, with the with so much like Jin and so much Trist, Sivir has a good spot in the current meta because she tends to be able to do well against both of those picks. And this buff, these this buff just makes her even better at doing what she already does. Uh, I don't necessarily think, think she needs this buff to see a lot of play, because I think she's seen a decent amount of play already, but this will make her even better than she already is, which I think she was relatively underrated in the first place. Uh, TF, they buffed... Oh, they buffed his move speed! Really? Okay, um, move speed is such a... It's a scary thing to buff on TF. I think... 
TF is one of the champions that, that uses move speed the best in terms of like being able to space out in lane as well as being able to, to gank people easier. Uh, this is definitely a really nice buff for TF. 5 MS doesn't seem like a lot, but it, the way you should think about it is like each 5 MS is a separate tier of champion. Like the highest move speed in the game, I think is it's, it's shared between Master Yi and Pantheon at 345. And 330 and 325 are like the two lowest tiers of move speed. So every five they go, that move, moves up for TF is like another tier in terms of where he's like faster than some, someone else. Oh, 355. My bad. All right. This is this is definitely a small small nice buff for TF Zareth. Ooh, now this is an interesting champion because I think that he might be like very close to being playable. So what do they do? They increase the slow on the edge of W, so you can line up your your, your Q better. Really, really nice by the way. Really good, and the damage on his ulti got increased a little bit. Uh, and he gets more charges. So what what does it turn out to be? He gets forty base damage at eleven and. 100 more base damage at 16. Uh, actually, this is just going to be a bit. This is a big buff to him in the first place. If you ever played Zareth, hitting them directly in the center with W is kind of unrealistic sometimes, especially during like really risky range matchups. But hitting them on the edge is very like quite easy. And so having a slow go up by what 15 percent allows you to be able to, or you should be able to hit the follow up Q really really easily, or like a lot easier than you could before. This is really really nice. Zach, Q cost and CDR increased. I think Zach is just still pretty strong, but the problem with Zach right now is there's also other other champions that are really really powerful as well. Uh, what did they do? So they're making it so his cost is eight percent current health. Okay, okay, okay. So this is something I talked about when I first played Zach. Uh, uh, that his stretchy strikes, if it hits. A, a champion, it gives you one blob passive blob on the first hit and one passive blob on the. Uh, when you hit another person again, a different person. And so, like, it makes it so Zach in general gets one more passive proc than he used to before. And I think they finally realized, they're like, wait a sec, that's actually a lot of healing over time. So they finally made it cost double so that it's actually punishing if you don't get a second target. As well as the fact that they nerfed the CDR on it by a little bit, which is nice. And they nerfed the base damage on W so he can't clear as easily. He's going to need a little bit more help to clear now, and... I don't necessarily know if he's going to be top, top tier. These are actually pretty significant nerfs for, for him. Because you're averaging three Ws a, a camp right now. That's a lot of damage that you end up losing. Uh, and this just might mean that he's not, gonna, it's not going to be that he's unplayable. He gets pushed out a couple of tiers and champions like Sejuani come up and like kind of replace him for like top dog. Cho'Gath, Cho'Gath for instance, still super good. Zig's W cooldown reduced. Uh, it was a super long. Wow, what? It was a super long cooldown for sure, and they they buffed it by six seconds at the last level. I mean, Danny's gonna really like that. Uh, Zig's players should all really like this because like six seconds off is a lot. Uh, it won't change his relative lack of play because he mid lane he doesn't do too well against most of the mid lane matchups. Bot lane, ditto. But uh, if he does get to the point where he hits like that late game curve, he's going to be a, a lot more slippery than before. Mid patch up notes. Oh yeah, they nerfed Singe and they nerfed Nunu. Uh, I was actually pretty surprised they nerfed Nunu. I thought that if they're going to nerf Nunu, why did they nerf? Why did they hot fix uh, Duskblade or like Cho'Gath? But I mean, I thought they. I think they think that Nunu was more impressive. I don't. I thought after the last nerfs plus this new patch, Nunu wasn't as good as as he was before. Adaptive Helm. I think Freak broke this down math-wise, and it was just like not a good item, almost in general, unless you're playing against Cassiopeia and Singed, and that's it. Um, and, and, and maybe Talia. And so 
uh, because of that, buffing this item definitely something that they should have done. Uh, I, uh, it should be good against those specific champions, like champions that use one ability. Karthus, for instance, a lot. Um, good buff. Duskblade. This item, really problematic. This needs to be nerfed. So what are they going to do? They're gonna, they nerfed the initial damage. Uh, this is already hot fix in the patch notes, right? And then they're... Actually, the damage is not going to go from... It's going to be more for melee champions and range damage, and they're removing the range slow, which is really good. It means that stuff like Jin can't get an immediate W follow-up, which is really, really obnoxious. The one thing I'm really scared about is the fact that, like, there's no there's no cooldown for the Dustplate proc. So some champions can still abuse Dustplate to get multiple procs. Like, I think that that's a really big balance problem because um, if you're really balancing the, the this item to work well off of, like, assassinations, certain assassins, like, let's say Kha'Zix, can reset this proc multiple times during a fight, which makes balance for that character with this item and without this item like, completely different. I would pro pro I would like a, just an internal cooldown on the damage, rather than just having an internal cooldown on the damage as well as the uh, reveal. Oh, Knight's Val got nerfed. This item's actually busted. Uh, it's really, it's, it's way too cost efficient. I'm glad that this got nerfed because this was literally the first item after Cinder Hulk every game for most uh, jungle champions. Especially when, when you factor in another player being there. It's really, really good. I think maybe having multiple procs do less damage is a good balanced way to do this, the Duskblade. Um, at the moment, though, I still worry about the very fringe characters who can abuse this very a lot, which is Kha'Zix, for instance, is a really good a uh, example of a champion that can do that. 50, you think 50 HP won't stop the trend, but it at least makes it so there's more options. Like 50 HP is quite a bit. Uh, on this item. Sorry, I'm, I'm alternating between the, these two so quickly, but I do think that this is definitely required a nerf. And even though you might not think 50 HP is a lot, it means that items such as which it competes against, such as Righteous, such as Warmogs, are more valuable now than they were before. And all you want to do is you don't want to break the item. You just want to make it so that if there's certain situations where, let's say, you're playing with, with a Twitch comp, you really need Knight's Vow to make sure he doesn't die instantly. Knight's Vow is a great item. But if you're playing with a Twitch comp, or uh, not a Twitch comp, you're playing with a comp where, like, Knight's Vow is just the best item to buy, even if you need, like, Righteous Glory for initiation, you still want Knight's because the item is so overtuned, that's a problem. Players cannot ping any item now instead not just active items okay this is kind of somewhat nice uh rebuy the attack move to left click okay don't do don't do any of this don't do any of this bug fixes i was told this is the most important thing and i think they know that because they made it the very top bug fix thresh e flay no longer leaves enemies stunned for a brief moment after displacing them the importance of this is just they're, what happens is that they get mini stunned when you eat them, uh, and they can't flash as fast. And it's really, really important because similar to Alistair's E W Q combo, um, you can now just get out of his, the CC a lot quicker. So this is actually like a decent nerf for Thresh. But yeah, I don't play Ascension, so this is kind of irrelevant to me. Read the Kindred one. <laughs> Kindred use Q to jump over a wall. The cast range of E would be permanent. Okay, well, I mean, that's actually important, but that's... I didn't even realize I was in the game. I'm, uh, the one big thing that I'm surprised about is that they didn't necessarily nerf Ancient Coin. I thought uh, at the moment it gives, I think, too much mana back. It's either too much mana or too much gold. So nerfing one or the other would have been really nice. Uh, that's something that I expected to see in this patch. Other expectations, I'm surprised that Juanis and Maokai are, are kind of being left in their current iteration. I think they're both pretty strong. Um, and if you're nerfing champions like Gragas, for instance, and Elise, 
uh, really high impact early game tank junglers. Like the junglers that don't get hit are going to be better by contrast. Um, and so I'm kind of worried about relative, the, relatively those other two tanks, but I guess we'll see what happens after this patch. Overall, they did fix a couple things that were, was pretty good. And I did like a lot of their buffs to weaker champions. The Lissandra, Lux buff, um, the, the Nasus buff, really, really nice. Uh, don't think they need the Saber buff. The Xerath buff was really good. And so overall, not a bad patch. Pretty good. Just kind of thought that they'd do a little bit more, but overall, not bad.